<laughs> now, that is interesting. You don't look like Doctor Strange or Doctor Who, but you definitely can control time. And the funniest part, it's not even a joke. In this episode, we are learning how to use checkpoints. Incredible feature, what some consider one of the most important and use it all the time, while some others, like me, disable it permanently. So, anytime something is happening with your files, anytime the model is going to make some changes or call for a console command, there a snapshot will be taken. It relates to each and every write operations. Now, using those snapshots, you can travel back in time, returning to the state of the system when this um, step was executed. So you can revert the time like it never happened. Those snapshots being reverted will reset both tasks, uh, task context back in time and also file state back in time. Be careful, uh, some uh, command line tools uh, changing, for example, files, uh, files outside of your uh, folder may be um, not involved, not, maybe not included in the snapshots, but all, all local changes will definitely will be included in the snapshots. How to use it? The story is very simple. Uh, we can see change sets, so see what exactly was changed by the model. We can restore context and files, really cool. And we even can edit previous steps, changing the path of history. First important thing for us, you need to check what there are settings, checkpoints, and they are enabled. They are enabled by default. Then second thing you want to have, you want to be sure what you have Git. So I definitely have Git installed. If you don't have Git installed, you might need to install it. Installation will be different for Linux and Unix. Um, I don't want to stop there for too long. I hope you can deal with that. If not, ask in the comments. So with checkpoints enabled and Git installed, we can do something like that. I'm going to create a new task and ask model to do something very simple. Write file step one with the content step one. Uh, that's a very simple task. So it will be done in no time. And as you see here, I've got a new file. Step one MD. Very nice. Um, so that's it. Now to demonstrate it, I want to have a couple of more files because I'm going to travel in time with you. So let me do that. Very well. So as we see now, we have four new files with pretty expected content. Step one, step three, step four. Very nice. How do we travel over and how do we see check, uh, checks, uh, change sets? Here on each checkpoint, one is created in the beginning of a task and then one more checkpoint for each writing operation. Uh, you can take a look at the div. Writing operation was here. Yes, so now we can see these div very well. Now also we can click here to travel in time on the time before this step has been executed. So I can push this button and I will be asked if I really want to restore files and task. One more time, two things, two changes happening here. Restoration of your files on the disk of your project, but also restoration of the context. If you, as you remember from the previous videos, our context changes with every next uh, feedback from you, question from the system, tool use, all those things. So also context also will be restored, like this conversation never happened. So I'm doing that, confirming that, and I've jumped back in time, but I've restored it way too late. So I actually want to go before step three was executed. So I want to go here. Restore files and tasks, yeah, and you can restore separately. Good. As you see, file 
Step 4 just magically disappeared, and now in the change set we have only three files. But it's getting even more interesting. We can't just travel back in time. We can uh, also change uh, lines of our past. As I can scroll, for example, to this right file step 2 with content step 2, and I can change it, and I can say create. Uh, file step to A with step to A and I will restore and send. And look, we travel it back in time, we created a new branch and now we are going with a new branch. Thanks to Doug Brown helping us with that. How it feels to be Marty McFly? So our new changes is step one because we kept it and step to A. File step uh, 3 and step 2 just disappeared because we created a new branch in our time history. So we can see new changes using those checkpoints. We can reverse restore checkpoints, reverting context and files, and we can view the divs first step and edit previous tasks. That's a very powerful feature. Now, If it's so useful, why do I have it disabled? Take a look. Internally, as you could guess from the need to have Git installed, that is nothing uh, but a shadow clone of your project. So a shadow Git clone, which lays in the task folder, hidden well behind, and it's used for all those Git operations with normal Git procedures, Git commit, Git checkout, all those things. And as you can guess, if you have a big project with big files, it will take tremendous, tremendous amount of disk space because each new clone will be created for each new task. So if we are creating a new task and keep working with this process, with, with this project, Boom, we get a new clone. And if you have big files, it will take a lot of space. I work from time to time with very big projects, so I have this feature disabled. Boom. Then you can ask me, but how do you do this job? Uh, how do you uh, see change sets? How do you uh, restore uh, how task is going? Very easy. I use just my normal Git for that. Everything I do is open source, almost everything. And it all is under Git, stored on GitHub. So every time model is doing something, I can just review it here using normal Git diffs, what I already have enabled anyway. And if I need to start fresh, if something went wrong, I can just start a new task. So, checkpoints is absolutely wonderful feature. I strongly recommend you to try to play with it, and I strongly recommend you to know what, what it exists and how it works. Then you can decide, do you want to use it, or do you prefer to disable it? But if you are not using it, and also don't disable it, you waste just huge amount of disk space for nothing. Cleaning history can be very simple. You delete the task or you just wipe out those folders on your disk drive. But still, uh, we don't want you to worry about that. The benefit what checkpoints give is wonderful. With checkpoints, you can try to recover from contaminated or poisoned uh, context, as we discussed it in the previous uh, episodes. So you can try to go back in time and uh, prevent some uh, contaminated context getting into the history by recovering and thus getting rid of that. But in most of the cases, if it was caused by hallucination, then mostly probably your context window is already way too big and module is behaving. So, hey, maybe you should consider a summarization and starting new task. That very much depends on the situation. But I'm really glad we did that together went through this episode and learned what are the checkpoints, how to use them, and how can they help you with successful development. 
So, we did wonderful job. I'm really happy we won through this feature. Now, please tell me, will you use those checkpoints or will you permanently disable them like I did? I'm very curious on what the percentage, how many people use that, how many people disable that. Very, very, very interesting. In the next video, we will finally get to model context protocol. I promise it you. Don't worry, it will not run away from us. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and see you in the next video.